Continuing in our classification of the elementary bifurcations, let's move on to our third entry. These are called pitchforks. What kind of weird name is that? Well, it's not that weird. These are pretty common. And finally, we get a name that is sensible, as we shall see. Let's go. Continuous time system. The normal form for a pitchfork bifurcation is the following. dx equals mu x plus c times x cubed, where c is some non-zero constant. Now, we might have higher order terms in there, whatever. We're going to forget about those for our analysis. Now, take a look at this. This looks kind of like the transcritical that we just saw. But instead of having a second order term in x, we have a cubic term in x. Let's see how this changes the equilibria. This system has equilibria at what? I set the right-hand side equal to 0. I factor out an x, so x equals 0 is always an equilibrium. But x equals plus or minus square root of negative mu over c is also an equilibrium or equilibria, depending on the values of mu and c. To get the stabilities, we take the derivative of the right-hand side. That derivative is mu plus 3c x squared. Now we have a couple of equilibria to evaluate this at. First off, at x equals 0, the derivative evaluates to mu. That means that when mu is negative, we have a stable equilibrium. When mu is positive, we have an unstable equilibrium. On the other hand, when I evaluate this derivative at x equals plus or minus square root of negative mu over c, what I get is negative 2 mu. That means that when mu is negative, we have unstable equilibria. And when mu is positive, we have stable equilibria, depending on what the value of mu is, what the value of c is. OK, you know the same story. Let's take a look, see what this system looks like. We're going to do what we've been doing, that is plotting in the x versus mu plane. I pick a particular value of c, that is c equals negative 1. So I have dx equals mu x minus x cubed. There's what? There's a stable equilibrium at 0 when mu is negative, unstable when mu is positive, and then I have a pair of stable equilibria going off to the sides when mu is positive. Now, if we look at the flow of this, then what we see is that everything is coming in from the left and the right and accumulating at these stable equilibria. That unstable equilibrium in the middle, when mu is positive, is pushing out. OK, that's great. What happens as we vary mu? When mu is negative, we just have a single stable equilibrium. But as you slowly push mu up through 0, then what happens is this becomes unstable and splits off into a pair of stable equilibria. So you, you flip your stability and you eject out this pair of symmetric stable equilibria. That's how it works. And that's it, same as it ever was. But note carefully that we chose a particular value of c, like we always have, c equals negative 1. Does that choice ever really matter? Hmm. If we go back and think about the saddle node, and look at what happened when c was negative versus what happens when c is positive, then that diagram in the x mu plane, it flips upside down, the stabilities were all reversed, but the same basic structure is in place. You're going from two equilibria, one stable, one unstable, to zero equilibria. If we take the transcritical bifurcation, do the same thing. Look at what happens when c is negative versus what happens when c is positive. We go from two equilibria, a stable, unstable pair, to two equilibria, a stable, unstable pair with stabilities switched. There's no real change. However, if we look at a pitchfork, and we change that constancy from negative 1 to positive 1. Look at what is happening dynamically. Then everything is flipped upside down and the stabilities are reversed. Oh ho! Reversing those stabilities makes a huge difference. Now, instead of a preponderance of stable equilibria, we have unstable equilibria all over the place. What do we have? We have a single unstable equilibrium that 
converts to a stable equilibrium and sheds a pair of unstable equilibria off to the side. That has totally different behavior. There's a special terminology that goes along with pitchforks, depending on the value of this constant C. We say that a pitchfork is supercritical or subcritical, depending on the value of this constant C. Supercritical pitchforks, negative C. Subcritical pitchforks, positive C. Now this terminology, it's a little weird, but it's really important when you have a pitchfork to distinguish between supercritical and subcritical because it makes a big difference. And not just in theory, but in practice, subcritical pitchfork bifurcations are extremely dangerous. They are not as reversible or recoverable as a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. Engineers should always design around subcritical pitchfork bifurcations. Why? Let's say that you're in the context of a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation and you're at that stable equilibrium on one side and everything's going fine, it's great, and you change your parameter so that you've gone through the bifurcation. Well, all of a sudden, you're at an unstable equilibrium and you start moving away. That's not so good, let's say. So what do you do? You say, whoa, I gotta reverse that. You turn the dial back and you're fine. You, you go right back to the stable equilibrium that you were at. That's a good design. On the other hand, if you're at a subcritical bifurcation and you start off at a stable equilibrium, you don't know that there's all this instability around you. So what do you do? Well, you turn the dial or stuff happens, your parameter changes, and now you lose stability. You go from stable to unstable. And you think, oh, wow, this is kind of getting out of control. So I'm going to turn that dial back down and everything's going to be okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. It might not be okay. You might be trapped, entrained by those unstable equilibria that you didn't know were all around you. And now you're out of control. And so you try turning the dial down even more, but uh, uh nope, it doesn't work. It is too late. Subcritical bifurcations, very dangerous. So that's the pitchfork bifurcation. Finally, you get a sensible name. You get that classic pitchfork shape where you're moving from one equilibrium to three or three to one. 